Well, moving on, we are uh, talking now uh, about uh, some of the events that uh, are involved uh, in, a, in a bankruptcy. Uh, so we'll, we'll work on that together. I uh, hope you've been enjoying these uh, sessions. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed them a lot. I think it's helpful to try to make uh, some kind of a connection uh, between us so that we can um, uh, at least, you know, uh, see some part of a traditional lecture uh, that would be uh, part of a normal class. So that's my intention uh, and I hope that it's working for you. So uh, another part of this then, as we said, is there are certain basic events uh, and so very important. Uh, here's an important word discharge. Um, this is the goal of uh, most debtors. I mean, they're looking for a way out, um, and so that would be a big part of it. Uh, also, issues involving reaffirmation. Very important. Uh, what happens in these cases is, you know, there are some debts that you want to keep, because you need that car or you need uh, a house, for example, uh, and so um, um, you know this is this is very important. Well, one of the basic things is uh, consider the no asset case. No asset case. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, it's just basically what it what it sounds like. Uh, the vast majority of uh, bankruptcies are what we call no asset bankruptcies. Now there for a long, long time there was really nothing for the trustee to administer on. Uh, but more and more what we're seeing is that they're taking a broader look at things like tax refunds. And you know this can get a law firm in trouble is if you don't consider you know that uh, people are probably expecting a very large uh, tax refund. Uh, one of the big ones uh, that uh, had an effect on people is what we call the earned income credit and that is where people generally have a really low income uh, but they have a couple kids in the household and at the end of the year the IRS actually gives them a pretty substantial uh, tax refund. You know, So let's say that uh, the person is expecting a $5,000 tax refund. Okay, well, well what, what is that? Well, that, that's an asset of the bankruptcy. Now, it is subject to certain, uh, you know, exemption terms, but it's uh, not going to be totally exempt. So that's uh, something um, that we need to be thinking about. So here again uh, is what, when it brings us to the issue of exemptions, uh, and we talked some about this already. I cannot stress this enough. Uh, Indiana has their own exemptions, and the importance of this is that it supersedes federal exemptions. Okay, and you know, this is critically important to understanding, uh, you know, how to fill out a bankruptcy, uh, which is going to be one of your responsibilities, is making sure that that is done correctly. So exemptions, um, you know, exempt property uh, is not available for liquidation for the trustee. Uh, exemption, primary element of debtor relief, okay? Now, like I said, in uh, Florida, you know, you can have uh, any amount of uh, real estate uh, value that you own, uh, and it is not subject uh, to any kind of liquidation if it's your homestead, if it's where you live. Well, in Indiana, it's a much smaller figure, it's uh, individually $15,000 and then the joint would be thirty. okay? 
Now the thing that we get into on this is that over uh, time, this number, you know, because of inflation and different other factors, this uh, number changes. It's not always the same. So um, basically, uh, that's important. So how, how do we know that the Indiana exemptions uh, are uh, like I say that they are? Well, I want you to refer to, and you know, this is in your uh, resource section of the course, uh, refer to uh, what we call IC 34 55 10 and then you want a uh, subpart section 2 okay so that's very important and uh, basically that's where it says the, the exact limitations as I said 15,000 for an individual 30 for a couple Important another part is uh, okay, um, and that's section two one. Uh, section two two is that so we get into other real estate or other uh, property eight thousand dollars. Okay, this could be the furniture inside the house, for example, or it could be, um, you know, maybe you got a cabin on the lake or something. Uh, and then the next thing is three, is any kind of personal, intangible personal property. And the only thing is on that, it's only $300. I heard a guy laughing one time as a different, another lawyer was laughing because he was in a bankruptcy and this lady was sitting there going over her uh, petition with the trustee and she's wearing like all this jewelry, it's all gold. She's got like about 12 gold necklaces on around her neck. It's not listed anywhere in her petition. So probably not wise, you know, to go that dressed up to your uh, 341 meeting in bankruptcy. So as we get further along in this then, uh, we will continue to stress the importance of some basic small differences and varies from state to state uh, on uh, this part. Well, also keep in mind the automatic stay. A lot of times uh, debtors are uh, looking uh, for an automatic stay. What's an automatic stay? Well, uh, this is an order from the bankruptcy court that stops all other collection proceedings. And I've actually had some small counties like Blackford County where they continued to ding, or in other words, pro sub, order the person to appear and question them, even garnish them uh, while they have a pending bankruptcy. And once the person says that, all they have to do is say it in open court. That's over. That collection proceeding is over. They're not allowed to go further. The uh, judge is not allowed to go further. Uh, and really probably for safety's sake, the debtor should uh, file uh, some kind of proof of stay, which is probably just a copy of the automatic stay with a face sheet explaining, well, you know, this is uh, what, um, you know, is, is going on. You can't, you can't garnish my check because um, I filed for bankruptcy relief. So automatic stay stops all other collection uh, you know, efforts. Now another important word we want to touch on, fresh start, these are also important parts of uh, why does a person file uh, bankruptcy, fresh start, uh, very important, you'll see this on your quiz, it comes up all the time, you need to specifically mention this uh, in uh, some of your um, uh, short answer questions. If you just say uh, fresh start, I'll give you full credit uh, on that quiz. So, But I see uh, some of you, you write like a whole page on why does somebody file bankruptcy and you never mention fresh start. So you've gone all the way around the barn, you never open the barn door. You know, So fresh start, very critical. Person wants to start over. Uh, you know, everybody has that feeling once in a while. And some of these people 
that are in like real trouble uh, need uh, you know a new chance. So um, here again, we talked about fresh start, automatic stay. Um, uh, so basically, uh, that's I think uh, pretty much what we're going to cover uh, for this time. Uh, we'll be back with you uh, with another uh, one of these. Uh, real shortly. Uh, hope that you're enjoying these and I hope that you have a good day. Uh, follow up with this and let me know on the discussion board if you have any questions, problems, or you can always email me or call me through the communication side of the uh, course that we're uh, on Blackboard. So enjoy. Talk to you later.